Welcome to the good, the bad and the ugly. Where the mighty are fallen, the good get ugly and there's no such thing as bad publicity. This time we browse the broken hearts and marriage vows of five romantic celebrities who are more than a little unlucky in love. According to the American Film Institute, she is the seventh greatest female star. The only remaining member of the all-time top ten, Elizabeth Taylor is also considered Hollywood's greatest survivor. Not least because of the staggering number of illnesses she's endured since hitting the big screen way back in 1943. Pictures of a long-suffering Liz emerging from hospital in a wheelchair were familiar inclusions in newsreels around the world throughout her glamorous heyday. And from 1947 to 1994, she is said to have suffered no fewer than 73 illnesses, injuries and accidents that required hospitalisation. Her trips down the aisle, though rather less frequent, have been numerous enough to keep her at number one on the list of Tinseltown's top wedding junkies. Married to Paris Hilton's great-uncle Conrad at the age of 18, she was under the thumb of her third husband, Mike Todd, by the time she was 25. Don't you rather long to be directed by your husband? Oh, I think they have to be beastly. She never got the chance to find out. Just months after this interview in 1958, Mike was killed when his private plane, the Lucky Liz, crashed in New Mexico. Devastated by his death, she then caused a scandal by shacking up with Eddie Fisher while he was still married to Debbie Reynolds. Liz's famous response to the media backlash was, what do you expect me to do, sleep alone? Two years later, on the set of Cleopatra, she succumbed to the charms of Welsh heartthrob Richard Burton. Thus began one of the most tumultuous relationships in Hollywood history, and the longest lasting of all of Elizabeth's marriages. They divorced in 1974, only to remarry the following year and divorce again the next. Clearly on the rebound, she ricocheted into the arms of would-be Senator John Warner. Their marriage saw a sharp rise in the Republicans' popularity, and Liz did her best to convince the world she was happy taking a back seat. Have you got bitten, do you think, by the uh, political bug yet? I certainly have. <laughs> I guess I'm the big bug. <laughs> <laughs> Is this husband of yours going to, uh, going to make it in 78? I surely hope so. And what about yourself? I mean, you're continuing with your film career. Off and on, yes. And uh, no ideas of politics yourself yet? No, just a politician's wife is enough. What? Or was it? After they divorced in 1982, Elizabeth sought solace in comfort food. Her weight ballooned, as did her consumption of prescription drugs and alcohol. In fact, it was during one of her trips to rehab that she met husband number eight, Larry Fortensky. They divorced in 1996, since getting shot of Larry, she's been ploughing much of her love and energy into raising awareness and funds for the Elizabeth Taylor Foundation she created in 1991, when most other celebrities were sticking their head in the sand about AIDS due to its moral complexities. In 2003, despite the fragile state of her own health, she turned on the glamour to support the annual Amfar Cinema Against AIDS benefit at Cannes. I pray to God that we do not give up. I'm sorry for getting so emotional. In 2005, she rocked up in her wheelchair to dedicate the new UCLA Clinical AIDS Research and Education Center. Having suffered the slings and arrows of media backlash for more than half a century, she has also shown great courage and loyalty in supporting friends who have fallen foul of the press. Most recently, she's refused to join the rats deserting Michael Jackson's sinking ship and continues to publicly defend him, as well as championing his increasingly bizarre behavior. He's a very brave man and he's, he's strong. Despite all her medical challenges, which more recently have included the removal of a benign brain tumour and the development of congestive heart failure, Liz has proved that she's pretty strong herself. 
While few would have laid odds on such a sickly woman making it to old age, she was still kicking up her wheels as she celebrated her 75th birthday with a star-studded bash in Las Vegas. And the secret to her longevity? Just living a very healthy, clean life. Liz Taylor's good friend, Liza Minnelli, has also endured more than her fair share of personal tragedy. She was just 22 when her mother's lifelong dependency on prescription medication ended in her death of an overdose on a bathroom floor at the age of 47. Growing up in Judy Garland's shadow had been hard enough, but one of Liza's greatest regrets is that Judy never got to see the film that launched her career. 1972's Cabaret established Liza as a formidable performer in her own right and won her the year's Academy Award for Best Actress. Despite all the heartache, Liza still clearly idolises Judy. I love my mother like crazy. She's my guardian angel. It was her guardian angel who introduced her to her first husband, Australian singer-songwriter Peter Allen. Peter turned out to be gay, and their marriage was over five years later. After that, Liza hooked up with Lucille Ball's son, Desi Arnaz. But just as the media were preparing for an announcement of their engagement... My engagement to Desi Arnaz has... Well, the relationship has been deteriorating for some time pleasantly, luckily. And there is no more engagement. That's all called off. And since I've been here, and had this marvelous time. I also met a man called Peter Sellers and fell in love with him. And I'm very pleased to say that he fell in love with me too. <laughs> All right? And that's about all I've got to say. Despite her fervor, the engagement came to naught and husbands number two and three were producer Jack Haley Jr. and sculptor Mark Gero. After her divorce from Mark in 1992, she vowed never to marry again. In between trips to rehab in the 90s, she set about relaunching her yo-yoing career by taking over from Julie Andrews in the Broadway show Victor Victoria. In the year 2000, however, she was floored by a serious case of viral encephalitis, which left doctors predicting she would spend the rest of her life in a wheelchair. But rather like Liz Taylor, she proved she was made of sterner stuff and found strength in a new man in her life, producer and concert promoter David Guest. Well, I lost a lot of weight, uh, and it helps me, you know, because I have a bad back. The thinner I stay, the better I feel. So, um, and also, David inspired me, you know. So, I, wanted, I want to... Uh, I want to work, I want to laugh, I want to have fun, you know? I'm Everything's right. been a bit serious before. <laughs> Not only did he get her out of the wheelchair and back onto the concert trail, the long-term bachelor and collector of Judy Garland memorabilia persuaded her to break her vow of celibacy. Here we are on the roof and I thought, wonder who and what's happening? And all of a sudden, <laughs> I turned around, I looked for Dave, and I went like this, because he's on his, his knee. And okay, he well... asked me, and I said, yes. Two months after splashing out three and a half million dollars on their lavish New York nuptials, Liza was happy as a clam as she announced that she and David were letting the cameras in for their own reality TV show. A year later, they were probably still paying off the caterers when the announcement came of a split so acrimonious that thankfully no cameras were around to film it. He claimed she had given him herpes, while she labelled him a drug addict. Then came David's shock allegations that Liza had repeatedly abused him. Pardon? How are you, co how are you coping with the allegations that have been in the newspapers the last couple of days? I think she's doing great. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm fine. But then smiling through the pain has been Liza's trademark ever since she belted out the tale of poor old Elsie in Cabaret in 1972. And just two years later, she was once again following in Liz Taylor's footsteps and joining the ranks of generous celebrities, 
by lending her support to Sharon Stone's annual Amphar benefit in France. I'm looking forward to being with all of my friends, to raising money, to help people who really are suffering. What is the importance you know? of Amphar? I mean, it saves lives. <laughs> it's very simple, it saves lives. Before allegedly giving up getting hitched, Billy Bob Thornton had already overtaken Liza Minnelli in the multiple marriage stakes. The writer, director, actor and musician trumped Liza's tally of four when he said I do to Angelina Jolie back in the year 2000. By that time, the so-called go-to alpha male had already married and divorced Melissa Lee Gatlin, Tony Lawrence, Cinder Williams and Pietra Dawn Chernak. The fact that none of his previous marriages had lasted more than four years didn't seem to worry the 25-year-old Angelina. And before long, media gossip surrounding the couple was centering on their supposedly eccentric behavior, which included wearing vials of each other's blood around their necks. How much truth was in the many rumors, who can say? But there was no denying the fact that Angelina was serious enough about the Sling Blade and Bad Santa star to have his name tattooed on her arm and to adopt a Cambodian baby with him. Still, the good times between them weren't destined to last, and Angelina filed for divorce in 2003, amid rumors that Billy Bob had done the dirty with the sex therapist Ange had sent him to after allegedly discovering he'd cheated on her with numerous groupies and members of their household staff. Whether or not the rumors were true, Billy Bob has openly admitted to fostering several obsessions that would test the strength of any relationship. Apparently, he has a morbid fear of antique furniture and cannot be in the same room with anything made before 1950. He has a similar phobia of patterned plates and silverware that sees him frequently insisting on using paper plates and plastic cutlery. Whatever the reason for his split from Ange, Billy Bob has since claimed that he's finally realized marriage is not for him and that he wanted to stop before racking up as many ex-wives as Mickey Rooney, whose tally of eight trips down the aisle equals that of his golden age contemporary Elizabeth Taylor. Despite having thrown in the towel on the matrimonial front, however, Billy Bob still regards himself as a big family man and a responsible father to his four biological children. Well, well, the family is the most important thing. Without the family, I don't need any of the rest of it. Wouldn't even want it. Uh, I just thank God that I've got a job so I can take care of all of them. <laughs> and it seems his repeated failure at holding down a long-term relationship has taught him to hold the successful marriages of friends like country singing duo Faith Hill and Tim McGraw in high regard. In these days and times, it's good to have a family and a home, and Tim's done that very well. He has a great family. He's a wonderful father, wonderful husband, and a great friend. Having said that, his respect for the sanctity of other people's marital unions came under suspicion in 2008, amid reports that he was a factor in the highly publicized split between long-term partners David Duchovny and Tia Leone. Rumor had it that while David was in rehab being treated for his addiction to sex, Billy Bob was bombarding Tia with lewd text messages. I have two words for you, champagne. <laughs> Clearly, maths is not Pamela Anderson's strong suit, but thankfully she has plenty of other talents and an impressive CV to fall back on. A former fitness instructor, she got her first modeling contract after being picked out of the crowd by cameras at a Canadian football game in 1989. Upon moving to Los Angeles, she bleached her hair blonde and had a boo job before nailing her audition for the role of lifesaver CJ Parker in Baywatch in 1992. She starred in the Shameless Flesh Fest for five years before leaving to produce and star in her own series, VIP. She still has very fond memories of her days on the beach in Baywatch. Every day was so fun. It's the best job in the world, being at the beach every day with my dog and my kids, and it was fun. Nothing's compared to it since. 
While attending a Baywatch reunion in 2006, she was asked about the secret to keeping a Hollywood relationship fresh and alive. Three months into quickie marriage to Kid Rock at the time, she replied... Uh, run around in slow motion in your bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta keep moving, for me. Or has it? Just one month later, Kid Rock filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences. And while gossip columnists had a field day speculating on the reasons for the speedy nuptials and even speedier split, it certainly hadn't been the first time that Pam had rushed headlong into a dodgy union. Back in 1995, she'd run down the aisle with Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee, just 96 hours after they met. Their yachting honeymoon in the Maldives will forever be etched into the public consciousness for spawning a leaked sex tape, which found its way onto the web to become the most downloaded video of the year. That turned out to be one of the higher points of their on-again, off-again three-year marriage, during which he regularly beat her and she allegedly contracted hepatitis C after sharing Tommy's tattoo needles. Their split in 1998 was followed by Tommy's four-month stint in prison for kicking Pam while she was pregnant with their second son, Dylan. Clearly, however, all that wasn't enough to put her off the bad boy drummer, and they briefly lived together again when he came out of prison. Then she moved on to two failed engagements to model Marcus Schenkenberg and Kid Rock, from whom she split in 2003. It came as a shock to just about everyone when out of the blue, three years later, Pam announced that she and the kid were not only back together, they were getting hitched. We enjoy each other's company. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's not to enjoy? <laughs> Sometimes when it's in there and the, the sun's not shining and you're confined to the building and her smile just lights up the whole room and you just say, that's what I enjoy. At the age of 39, Pamela was quoted as saying that she finally felt free from Tommy Lee and put her home in Malibu up for sale. Enjoying her last few days of singledom, she was living it up in Las Vegas. I've, had, I've been bacheloretting for too many years. I think um, I'm just going to have a good time with all my friends, but everybody will be naked, of course. The rush to make sense of the revived romance had gossip columnists speculating that the marriage may be pregnancy-related. In fact, just three weeks before Kid Rock filed for divorce came the announcement that Pam had suffered a miscarriage. While some media commentators thought that news explained the rift, others blamed Kid Rock's outrage at Pam's cameo appearance on the film Borat for the split. The story goes that he felt she'd humiliated herself, while Pam stood by her decision to appear in the Sasha Baron Cohen mockumentary. I love Sasha, he's awesome. That's a huge compliment. He's a genius. And being single again after just four months didn't deter her from dipping her toe in matrimonial waters again the following year. This time, she hooked up with Paris Hilton's former boyfriend and professional poker player, Rick Salomon. At least the couple would have been able to compare notes on homemade sex videos before their annulment less than ten weeks later. Pamela Anderson's former Baywatch colleague, Carmen Electra, seems to have been equally unlucky in love and matrimony. But just like Pam, it hasn't been for want of trying. The glamour model, TV personality, entertainer and sex symbol who rose to fame through her appearances in Playboy magazine was born Tara Patrick in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1972. Apparently, it was pop virtuoso Prince who persuaded her to adopt the flamboyant stage name when she auditioned for an all-girl rap group. She took the advice and ended up signing a recording contract with Prince's record company Paisley Park. The pair also briefly became an item, and although she then went on to score a nude pictorial in Playboy magazine, which led to work on Baywatch and a role in the spoof Scary Movie, her early professional career was overshadowed in the media by her high-profile romances. Along with Prince, her former beaus have included bad boy basketballer Dennis Rodman, B. Real of Cypress Hill and Tommy Lee.
In 2003, she seemed to have found lasting love in the arms of former Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist Dave Navarro. Married life's been amazing. I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I feel more stable and I just, you know, I'm just so happy to be with someone that I trust and someone that's got my back. Sweet. The happy couple chronicled their wedded bliss on the MTV show Till Death Do Us Part, Carmen and Dave. Three years later, 34-year-old Carmen was filing for divorce, citing the old favourite, irreconcilable differences. But having been through the death of her mother and sister in the same year, she was able to put the split into perspective. You know, there's ups and downs in life, you know, whether it's your personal life or whatever, we all experience that and it's just a matter of how you look at it and how you handle it. And sometimes, you know, I don't know, there's just different ways of getting through hard times. Um, this actually, I wouldn't even consider a hard time compared to what I have gone through. <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> Getting divorced was nothing compared to battling media rumours that cosmetics giant Max Factor was preparing to pull her modelling contract after she indulged in sexy antics with a vibrating chair on The Howard Stern Show. However, Carmen rubbished the claims that she was about to be dumped as the makeup company's new face. No, it's not true at all. It's crazy. I have a strong relationship with Max Factor and... Yeah, they were just at my premiere for the movie two nights ago. And if Max Factor had been offended by a little fun and games with a massage chair, they would certainly have spat the dummy upon watching Scary Movie 4 and Carmen's less than tasteful toilet scene. I'm peeing in the planter again, aren't I? Actually, it, the scene started off completely different. It was more of a tinkle scene and then later on they decided it would be funnier if they added some other sound effects so um, they tested it in front of an audience and they went crazy and loved it so yeah I remember getting the call and going okay whatever you want to do I mean you know I'm a good sport and when you get involved with a movie like Scary Movie you know what to expect. Clearly, they were more than happy with their new spokes diva, who has carved quite a niche for herself, playing scantily clad roles in a string of spoof movies and comedies. Since Scary Movie 4, she's made appearances in Date Movie, Epic Movie and Disaster Movie. Ironically, however, she got to keep her clothes on in 2007's I Want Candy, in which she played a porn star. You know, I didn't have nudity in the movie. Sorry, I probably shouldn't say that because it you know, it may promote it more <laughs> if you think there is nudity, but, um, you know, I was really, really lucky in that way because it actually doesn't, the movie doesn't rely on that, which is really cool. And in the 2008 spoof, Meet the Spartans, she got to watch other people take their clothes off. Carmen's late bid for respectability seemed to correspond with her intentions to let musician Rob Patterson make an honest woman of her. When they were spotted holding hands in early 2008, she was sporting a huge rock on her wedding finger that confirmed reports she was preparing to become a bride for a third time. We're just taking it slow, you know, just in, in, enjoying the process. Perhaps they were taking it a little too slow for Carmen, who ended up ditching Rob and getting engaged to materials engineer Tim LeBeau instead. 